in humans. Wait a moment. Um, so DKBDE has a lower toxicity, but can debrominate to the lower brominated and more toxic PBDEs. And also, additionally, the DKBDE has a strong potential to form brominated dioxins and furans. So please note that the brominated dioxins and furans are similarly toxic as the chlorinated dioxins and furans, but the brominated dioxins and furans are not listed in the yeah. Stockholm Convention. So, uh, Excuse me, Asa. Robert, some, someone, has, someone has not muted their mic, please. Asa. 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 <laughs> okay, so here, uh, like I said, the PBD are excellent dioxin precursors. So we have a review, uh, or I have a review with a colleague on this from 2003, quite interesting. Um, so also we have measured in Africa, uh, electronic waste, plastic, and from the concentrations we have found, uh, this is about 0.1% of the, of the PBDEs in, in the respective plastic. We could estimate that the about 1.4 million tons of PBDEs included or, of, or formed about 1,000 tons of brominated dioxins. Yeah? And normally with dioxins, we talk about grams, right? Uh, so here uh, in the in the, the e-waste plastic, yeah, we have uh, rather hundreds or up to 1,000 tons of brominated dioxins. Another very interesting experiment from a friend of mine, Professor Vetter from Hohenheim. He cooked a fish including containing DKBDE. And then during the cooking of the fish, what you see here within 60 minutes, the uh, DKBDE decreased by 80%. Yeah, but at the same time, the furans were formed in the fish in the, in the baking. Yeah. Um, so you see that even uh, here um, in, 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 in the cooking, this kind of dioxin formation from the DKBDE can happen and uh, also deprimination can happen. Um, so therefore the Stockholm Convention uh, listed first the tetra, penta, hexa and hepta bromodiphenyl ether in the convention. Because as I said, for those, the bioaccumulation was clear uh, biomagnification and the toxicity. So the DKBDE took took a bit longer in the discussion than more eight years. So just an overview on the commercial mixture and what they contain. So here you see the commercial BDE contain mainly tetra and penta BDE. Yeah, 30 to 50% and only a little bit hexa BDE. The commercial octa BDE contain Hexa BDE and uh, major hepta BDE and octa BDE. Yeah. And because hexa BDE and hepta BDE was listed in 2009, also commercial uh, octa BDE production uh, is, is not allowed. When it comes to the deca BDE, the deca BDE really consists to more than 97% normally. Uh, out of uh, the fully brominated DKBD and was listed in 2017. So for the DKBDE, uh, yes, we know it has the highest uh, use. Uh, it is uh, used in the major applications of brominated flame retardants, mean electronics, transport sector, and construction. Alternatives are available, <clears throat> but at, at higher cost. So therefore, uh, when developing countries uh, were asking for exemptions in the listing of uh, the DECA BDE, these exemptions were granted. Uh, and also when you look uh, to the website of the Stockholm Convention, you see that several countries have registered for exemptions for the DECA BDE. The exemptions which have been listed are textile products, then additives in plastic housing, especially uh, the heating home appliances. Then also exempted is polyurethane foam for building insulation. Then specific parts uh, used in vehicles and also in aircrafts. And this is detailed also in the Stockholm Convention text 
I do not go into these details. You can check the convention text here. Um, when the uh, PBDEs for 2009 has been proposed, then uh, the, the parties of the convention agreed that there should be an exemption for the recycling because uh, it was not clear when now the PBDEs, uh, tetrapentahexahepta, were listed in 2009, if this would not prohibit the recycling of e-waste plastic and maybe other material flows. So therefore, in 2009, uh, time-limited exemption for the recycling of articles that may contain PBDEs listed 2009 and the use and final disposal of articles manufactured from such recycling was included as exemption. But then in 2017, when DKBDE has been listed, there was no request of exemption for recycling. Yeah, probably because in these uh, about eight years, uh, parties have seen what kind of challenges also from a recycling would come and that there are possibilities of separation in the recycling. We can discuss on that. So what we have now at the moment, uh, which is interesting, is a discussion on the low pop content. Um, so the low pop content is defining uh, from which concentration on uh, waste is considered pop. And uh, here at the moment, we have a, a proposal of uh, different levels, um, 50 ppm, 500 ppm, and 1000 ppm. Here, especially DKBDE is the challenge. And if uh, here a uh, low, the 50 ppm would be uh, selected, probably no recycling uh, would be possible. So when you look to the overall obligation of the convention for the PBDEs, you see production and use of the PBDEs listed in 2009 is not allowed, but we have uh, the production and use of DKBDE is exempted with registration. Recycling of articles containing PBDEs of 2009 is allowed, um, but a party need to notify the secretariat. The recycling of DKBDE is not allowed. Um, and uh, therefore, um, basically uh, the recycling of um, because the DKBD is by far the highest concentration in the e-waste, because of that, uh, the recycling of uh, plastic containing these PBDEs, all the PBDEs, is uh, more or less not possible anymore. But it's possible to separate and then recycle the non-contaminated plastic. One country, fortunately, also have made a historic inventory of uh, uh, the use of PBDEs in, 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 in the country, and that's Japan, which uh, is a big uh, car manufacturer and also a big uh, manufacturer of electronic goods. And what you see here uh, is that Japan already stopped commercial Penta BDE use in 1991. So already there, the Japanese government and industry saw, oh, that's a problem. So we, we, we take it out. And also commercial Okta BDE by 1995 was more or less uh, phased out. Yeah. So also here you see, yes, the major thing is the commercial DECA BDE because it has been used here in much higher concentration. But what you also see here, the largest use was in the 90, end of 1980s and in the 1990s. So uh, the last 20 years, the use decreased, decreased. And by 2017, the Japan stopped uh, the, the use of, of DECA BDE. Yeah. Similar, when you look to hexapromocyclodrodecan for this country, uh, the, the use increased, increased. And then in 2013, you had the, the, the listing. And here also Japan stopped the use of hexapromocyclodrodecan. Yeah. So other countries um, like Europe has a probably quite similar use. Uh, we know that uh, we have, for example, in the United States, uh, a different use, what I said. So they produced uh, commercial Penta BDE and commercial Okta BDE until 2004. So a longer use and, and a higher use. And um, also uh, China uh, is still producing hexapromocyclododecan. But 
will stop the production at the end of the year in, uh, in December. Also from Japan, we have uh, the valuable information in what products the DKBDE has been used. So you see here that, yes, the major use was in the 1990s. And here, when you look uh, to the type of products, you see that 80% have been used in, in electronics yeah, at, at, uh, at the highest use here. Yeah? But then uh, already here, early 2000, electronics have mainly phased out. Yeah? And then uh, let's say the major use here was in, in, in textiles. And a large part of these textiles were used in the transport sector, what we have seen. Yeah? So, you know, by these time trends, you much better understand uh, what was the time trend, because also that's important for you to understand in what products you, you can find mainly these uh, chemicals. And also Japan did an inventory further of all brominated flame retardants and published it. And what you see there is that uh, while the PBDEs decreased in the, after the 1990s very strongly, other brominated flame retardants increased uh, much more. So therefore, um, the overall use of brominated flame retardants uh, is higher uh, after, after 2000s in Japan. Uh, and by this, you also understand when you do a monitoring, and that's also interesting for you, Hassan, when you do a monitoring of electronics, you will see that after 2000, more or less 90% uh, of the bromine you find uh, in electronics does not come from the PBDEs, but rather from other brominated flame retardants like the tetrabromobisphenol A. Yeah. But also uh, tetrabromobisphenol A, for example, in the European Union is at the moment targeted by, by policy. Yeah? So also, let's say tetrabromobisphenol A is, uh, is a, a very strong endocrine disrupting chemical and uh, you need to take care when you have it as an additive. So you can also look to the major use of the PBDEs in uh, different products. So for commercial Octa BDE, this was really easy because the largest amount, more than 50% of all the commercial Okta BDE has been used in electronics and here, especially in the cathode ray tube housings. This means these big, heavy televisions and the big, heavy computer monitors. And only a very minor amount has been used, uh, for example, in transport sector. When it comes to commercial Penta BDE, the use is completely different. So commercial Penta BDE has not been used in plastic. It has been used in polyurethane foam. More than 90% of the commercial Penta BDE has been used in the polyurethane foam. And like I said, in the US. And um, additionally, there were some use in, um, in textiles yeah, from commercial Penta BDE. When we uh, come to DKBDE, DKBDE has been used in all these applications and you will see also in different electronics. So commercial DKBDE inventory and assessment is uh, more, more complicated and uh, still we need more monitoring results, especially for example, there are no data. So we, I know that uh, DKBDE was heavily used also in construction, but actually there is no data on this, yeah. Um, so also when you look to the use of these uh, PBDEs and prominated flame retardants, you understand that big a share of the overall plastic use is impacted. So the total use of plastic in construction, electronics and transport is uh, about 35% uh, in Europe. Yeah. From the 35% of plastic, not all plastic is flame retardant in these uses, yeah? only a small share. But for you, when you do waste management, it's really tricky uh, to see ah, what is impacted and what is not impacted. So therefore I said, ah, okay, so this management of the BBDEs for a country at the same time can be a good start of systematically as, uh, assess and manage the major plastic uses. yeah. And of course, in these um, plastics, we have uh, other 
uh, pops, for example, chlorinated paraffins uh, is uh, heavily used in PVC, uh, which is going to more than 50% in construction. And we have other endocrine disrupting chemicals here in the plastic like phthalates and bisphenols. I would like to maybe uh, recommend you to look to our review article from this year. So we have assessed the use of chemicals in plastic and we have found more than 6,000 chemicals uh, used in plastic and more than 1,500, which is uh, on uh, um, lists uh, globally uh, with some concern. This is a study on uh, e-waste plastic in Europe from different countries. And uh, here they have analyzed different kind of uh, electronic plastics. So you see here, for example, coolers and freezers, uh, small appliances, then uh, uh, cathode ray tubes, uh, flat screen uh, monitors, and then at the same time, they have screened what flame retardants they find. So you see, Penta BDE is not found in any. Uh, why? Because, like I said before, Penta BDE is not used in plastic. Yeah, the Octa BDE they really only found in the CRT monitors. Yeah, for the others, the levels were far below one thousand milligram per kilogram, uh, below one hundred even. But for the DECA BDE, yes, they also found high concentrations in this uh, uh, CRT plastic, yeah, but they also found relatively high amount here uh, in um, small appliances uh, for high temperature applications, uh, but they found it at low concentrations in coolers and freezers. And so at the moment there is a discussion, ah, maybe the coolers and freezer appliances might be able to be recycling, recycled without uh, separation. Another important aspect uh, for electronics is the export and import. Yeah, so that's also interesting for the, for the Middle East, uh, but especially for developing countries getting these, these, these electronic waste, especially from United States, uh, Europe, uh, Japan, Korea, but I also think that the, the Middle East is probably here uh, rather an exporting country. And uh, what happened with these uh, exports were a contamination of uh, South Asian countries like uh, uh, China or uh, Pakistan, uh, India, uh, but also uh, meanwhile in Africa. So therefore, uh, when we look here to the overall life cycle, of the pops, like I showed it you for the for the PFOS and uh, uh, for the chlorinated paraffins. Uh, in addition, let's say to the accumulation here in the environment and uh, accumulation in, in in animals and cattle and food ingestion. Also, we have a very strong exposure from products, and also now for the first time we see that we have an exposure from the recycling and from the uh, non-controlled uh, recycling of uh, products containing these PBDEs. Um, this you see, for example, here in the human milk, you see here two cities in China uh, and one city in China here, Taishou, Taishou region, has nearly the PBDE levels like the United States. And the reason is that you have here uh, for 20 years uh, e-waste recycling. Yeah, where millions of tons of electronic waste were imported to China and until about 2008, 2009, were um, recycled in these areas. Yeah, but then the Chinese government interfered. So today there is no, not, not, not such uh, e-waste recycling anymore. But you see another Chinese city has uh, 100 times less PBDE levels. Yeah, so you see that by this large recycling flows, you really can contaminate a population where you do this recycling in, in large scale. And another uh, interesting uh, studies um, are the analysis of uh, these PBDEs uh, in consumer products. And you see here uh, one study from China on toys in 2009. So at that time, all the plastic Chen analyzed here in, in South China contained uh, PBDEs and other prominated flame retardants. And also here in the United States, uh, Professor Diamond from Toronto University 
she analyzed her salad servers, kitchen tools, and she found about 1,000 uh, ppm of uh, PBDEs in her salad servers. That's a study in Czech Republic for coffee cups, and especially here you see the lids. Um, here also uh, PBDE levels uh, in these coffee cups were up to 1,000 uh, uh, ppm. So you see, especially this, this black plastic uh, is often uh, produced from, from, from recycling. So the recycling flow of the PBDEs containing plastic seems largely uncontrolled and need a better life cycle management and control. And I am so thankful that the PBDEs have been listed in the Stockholm Convention. And in the last 10 years, much efforts have been done uh, in, in, in many countries, in, including China, yeah, to improve uh, the, the situation. And also from the Stockholm Convention and Basel Convention, we have guidelines and guidance yeah, which uh, uh, give you uh, uh, the options and show you how this uh, plastic can be separated and uh, um, a share of this uh, plastic from electronics can be recycled. Um, about human exposure, one interesting study from the UK. So also in the UK, they uh, found kitchen tools contaminated. And then they took these kitchen tools into hot cooking oil for 15 minutes. And what you see here that uh, the PBDEs are extracted to a large extent. Yeah. So um, the, especially the lower uh, PBDEs the higher, with the higher toxicity, they are largely already extracted uh, with, the, with the first three uh, kind of uh, cookings in this oil. Yeah. So you see directly, you can get a, a human exposure here uh, from this application. The same uh, has been shown for polyurethane foam. So polyurethane foam is, for example, uh, recycled in carpet padding. Uh, and uh, here, a study uh, of Stapleton in the United States showed that the blood levels of uh, workers doing the recycling, but also of carpet installers, which are using the recycled polyurethane foam, had very high uh, levels in human blood. Yeah, so you know this is the, the background level of the controls in this study. And already this is much higher than the levels which we have in the Middle East or in Europe or in Asia. Yeah. And of course, uh, then um, finally you get exposure uh, to also to the, these recycled products. You see here, they put this often under the carpets. So uh, you get the dust and the PBDEs in the carpets. So in studies in the, in, in the US, the, the levels of, uh, of uh, uh, children were higher than adults. And this is another study in the US on blood levels, which I think is really teaching. And I would recommend all of you to have a look to this study. So what you see here, this is a cohort uh, in Wisconsin. Um, and they have analyzed twice the blood of about uh, 40 people. Uh, here is 15 women uh, and um, about 29 men, so 44 people together. And what you see is that the difference between low contaminated people and highest contaminated people are two orders of magnitude. This means 100 times. Yeah, And uh, the, the reason is then clear it's not food. Yeah, Because when you have food for PCBs, normally, let's say the difference is a factor of three. So here, really, those people with high levels, they are exposed by products. And uh, in these studies, they have found, ah, okay, PBDE-treated pillow and also um, PBDE in vehicle yeah, had a correlation to, the, to, to these high levels. Yeah? And therefore, with this commercial Penta BDE, it's really, really important to see where are the products. Yeah? So therefore, cars from the US from the 1980s, 1990s, yeah, are really interesting maybe also to, to check in, in, in the Middle East, yeah, because I know you have also these vintage cars, yeah, I don't know, Mustang or something, yeah, so uh, I would think that this is a really interesting uh, research study. So, um, again, here I highlight the material and substance flow analysis. I give you, give you one example from Morf et al. from 2003 for Switzerland, yeah, where he has shown okay, what are the PBDEs in products and in use, in recycling and import and export? So a recommendation to have a look uh, to this study. And also 
uh, in the first pilot project uh, of the Stockholm Convention for PBDEs, which was in Nigeria, uh, I initiated a material and substance flow analysis uh, with a PhD student from Professor Osibanjo. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Baba Yemi. And uh, also he did an assessment on the material and substance flow analysis of uh, PBDEs in, in e-waste and also PBDEs in, in the transport sector. Yeah, maybe also interesting to have a look at. So for sure, for these new industrial pops, as you have seen, it's important uh, that you need to do the assessment along the life cycle, but also do a management of the whole life cycle. Especially now when we are talking, the world is talking on moving to circular economy. Yeah, circular economy means, yes, we really need to resources the resources in our products to produce new products. Yeah, otherwise, we run into two problems. Uh, one is the decrease of resources, and the second is uh, that we cannot handle the waste anymore. So therefore, uh, I think it's also a very good opportunity, this PBDEs in the product for you to learn about, let's say, a problematic chemical in large material flows, and first, how to manage it, and the second, how important it is to substitute such chemicals uh, in, the, in the products. Only shortly to the two other brominated flame retardants, the hexabromobiphenyl, it has only been produced uh, in the US from 1970s to 1976, and it has only been produced in 5,600 uh, 5, tons. It was used in about the same applications like the PBDEs, this means uh, in vehicles uh, and in, in plastics. Um, and uh, currently, yes, no production, possibly also the old US cars from 1970 to 1976 uh, if there is still uh, this kind of vintage car around. Uh, was they, it uh, was a total ban, so no production and no use and no uh, exemption. And since only about 5,600 5, tons of this HPCD have been produced and have been used uh, at that time, almost all of the material have been disposed decades ago. So due to the early and small production and use of HBB, it is not relevant anymore. Yeah, Like I said, maybe the only ex exemption is this US vintage cars from, from, from that time. So this low relevance is also reflected in low uh, HBB levels in food. For example, there's a study in the EU countries where most of the um, PBB were below the detection limit and also in the WHO human milk study, the HBB was below the detection limit. Then uh, the last uh, brominated flame retardants, hexabromocyclododecan. Uh, production still continues uh, in, in China, but like I said, there is a project to phase out HBCD in China by the end of the year. So the current use is uh, in uh, flame retarded, uh, expanded and extruded polystyrene, EPS, XPS, which is and was the major insulation uh, foam in construction. And most of the HBCD, more than 90% is in this use. And what is important is that this use, when it, it's in the building, then it's there for 30 years, 50 years, or even 100 years. So let's say uh, it's clear that uh, these EPS and XPS is uh, also quite important to, to, to inventory and uh, to manage the next uh, decades. It was uh, listed in Annex A. Uh, the exemption was the, the use uh, and further production for EPS, XPS. Um, for all countries, it has expired, except of China, which where it will expire at the end of the year. So therefore production and use of HBCD is only allowed for this uh, EPS and XPS uh, and is, has stopped now. Um, if it has been used in construction in recent years, it should have been labeled. Uh, the continued use of this insulation material is allowed. This means you do not need to remove now uh, this HBCD containing EPS and XPS from the houses, um, but if you then uh, do a reconstruction or a breakdown of these houses, it needs to be managed in an environmental sound manner, manner. And what is important, recycling of articles 
containing HBCD uh, above uh, a certain level is not allowed. Okay, we have an inventory guidance uh, for the PBDEs. Uh, this has been updated. Um, and as for the other industrial pop, uh, it has the same structure. This means uh, first uh, introduction uh, to PBDs in the Stockholm Convention, then uh, information on formal use and production, and then the different inventory steps, and then for the different uses uh, and production, uh, individual uh, chapters here uh, for, the, for the assessment. So first, because uh, DKBDE is still uh, produced, so the first assessment would be if there is production, no production in the Middle East, um, but there is uh, import, possibly import and export. And uh, here uh, the guidance gives you also HS codes uh, under which uh, the DKBDE uh, could be uh, imported or exported. Uh, but unfortunately, None of these HS codes is uh, specific for, for DKBDE. Um, but what we have uh, done uh, recently in the pilot project for, for DKBDE inventory, we have checked uh, for, for Israel. Is, in Israel, there is one of the largest producer of, of uh, PBDEs of DKBDE in the world. So we have checked the export uh, from Israel under this HS code. And what you see here, it looks that this is really the, 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 the start of production, increase of production and major production of DKBDE. And what you see here, the decrease of uh, the, the, the export uh, of these chemicals. And so it's, it's, it seems that most of this HS code actually uh, for the export, at least from Israel, uh, uh, is addressing this DKBDE. Yeah, so also here, good news is, it seems 2018 that the production has uh, stopped there. I have also talked with uh, somebody from the industry and he said, yes, the DKBDE here in Israel has stopped uh, by 2018. Um, so that's one thing you could, you could check for the imports. Um, then uh, the second step, if there would be DKBDE import, then you could check if DKBDE is used in production. Yeah, so you would check uh, if you have production of electronics and uh, if what flame retardants are used, uh, do you have production of uh, vehicle parts where DKBDE uh, may be used, uh, production of uh, specific textiles, uh, which require anti-flammability characteristics, production of polyurethane foam. Um, so... And for all these, there is also exemption. So when you discuss with your industry, uh, at the same time, you can say, okay, I mean, if you are using it at the moment, there are alternatives, but it's also an exemption. So uh, possibly you could ne negotiate when they would stop this production. Um, also uh, interesting to look to the industries which are recycling uh, potentially uh, DKBDE and other pop PBDE containing materials, yeah, like recycling of e-waste plastic, recycling of polyurethane foam, um, or uh, polymers uh, from, from vehicles. So here the outcome of the basic inventory would be a detailed information of the individual sectors potentially using uh, the contact to establish to the industry association to check what flame retardants they are using. And also here I it's maybe interesting, I mean, to, to see if, if they give you more information, what kind of, 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 of uh, flame retardants they are using. Because also other flame retardants have uh, certain uh, PBT properties. For example, uh, hexabromobenzene is used. Yeah, I mean, this is the brother of hexachlorobenzene, which is uh, a, a pop uh, from the beginning. Yeah, so therefore maybe it's it's interesting to uh, see to understand what what uh, flame retardants are currently used and to discuss uh, with the with the industry, and also the, the total quantity of uh, of of these products, um, and also uh, of the recycling. That's just a, a table uh, from from the inventory, where if you find something, you can compile this um, in the inventory. 
And uh, by this, I would come to the electronics and the PBD inventory. So electronic waste is the fastest growing waste stream in the world. In 1992, we had 14 million tons. In 2002, uh, 24 million tons. In 2019, already 53 million tons, more than 53 million tons. And for 2030, it's estimated that there are more than 74 million tons of uh, electronic electronics. Yeah, and as you can read for in the Kuwait inventory, yes, they they admit yes here in the Middle East we are high users of of, of electronics. Yeah, so it's uh, also a, a real issue uh, in 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 your region. And then about 20 percent of the electronics in average is uh, plastic. This means. Today, we have about uh, 50, uh, point, uh, 53 million tons. So this means we have more than 10 million tons of electronic waste plastic a year. And when we look to electronics and electronic waste, we see the PBDEs are not the only uh, pollutant we have there. We have still from old electronics uh, PCBs in, in, in condensers uh, or transformers. We have uh, uh, greenhouse gases and uh, ozone depleting substances like chlorofluorocarbons, for example, uh, in, in the air conditioners, but also in, in, in different insulation foams there. Uh, we have uh, mercury and we have uh, many other heavy metals. So also here assessment of the sector uh, best include also other uh, pollutants. But it's not only pollutants. Yeah, in electronic waste, of course, you have uh, gold and silver and uh, palladium and platinum. So it's very valuable to to do a recycling of uh, these materials. And also, the plastic in electronics is a valuable plastic. It's a high it's a uh, high performance plastic. So therefore, the V plastic can be recycled after appropriate separation steps. And it is really a business opportunity. So V plastic is self replenishing. So we know that the next uh, years, every year, more than 10 million tons uh, of this plastic we get. Yeah, and if a company can develop a separation scheme uh, and can make a market for those, uh, especially uh, with green labels and so on, today also producers like to have recycled plastic. Uh, then it can be a, a business opportunity and. Uh, the plastic recycling really saves energy and water. So it reduces about uh, uh, one ton uh, to up to three tons of CO2 uh, recycled plastic compared to, to new plastic. But as I have shown you, we need to take care when, do, when we do this recycling that not uh, the wrong uh, plastic and contaminated plastic go into the uh, sensitive consumer products. Um, very important when we talk about uh, PBDE, inventory in electronics is that, let's say, the PBD inventory is only a very small part of the e-waste inventory. So what actually each country would need is a robust e-waste inventory to develop an appropriate management of e-waste. So a range of uh, e-waste inventory have been developed uh, even in developing countries in Africa, Asia, uh, in the frame of the Basel Convention with the support of Japan and the support of Switzerland. Uh, also, Germany is active in this in, in this e-waste uh, management thing for developing countries. So, this inventory data, and I I hope that also Oman has started with e-waste e-waste management and inventory, so they can be used uh, for also uh, developing the PBD inventory. And if Oman or other countries uh, in the region does not have any e-waste inventory yet, then I think this PBD inventory can become a start to develop an e-waste inventory. Like for the other industrial pops, uh, we suggest a five-step approach, planning the inventory, choosing data collection methodology, collecting data, managing and evaluating data, and then preparing an inventory report. Also, this is guided uh, in the um, inventory guidance, so here, planning the inventory, establish an inventory team, identify uh, key stakeholders, yeah, the different ministries. So not only the environmental ministry, but also get the industrial ministry in and make it interested 
uh, in this uh, in this e-waste and e-waste management um, to define the scope, um, what you want to uh, address, and then uh, a, a work plan. Choose the data methodology, like I introduced you, uh, which tier, yeah. If you uh, only have short time and you can only do a desk study uh, tier one, but I hope that for Oman at least uh, you can do a, a tier two, a detailed assessment of, of the statistics and information from the stakeholders, assessment how the waste management is done, assessment on the, on the exports, yeah, or you can think if there is already maybe some recycling of e-waste plastic and you have samples, you can discuss uh, maybe with, uh, 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 with the Kuwait Center if they want to analyze uh, some of this e-waste plastic. But e-waste plastic is a bit tricky to analyze. Uh, you need a specific cleanup uh, and the sampling is really, really, really difficult. Uh, it's not so easy just to take uh, a few plastic parts from electronics, uh, but uh, you need to, uh, when, 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 it, when, when you want to go about recycling, you really need to think about how to do sampling. I have at the moment a project uh, with an African country where I have uh, developed uh, such a um, monitoring scheme. Uh, then <clears throat> the third step is uh, initial assessment, outcome and activity. This means compilation of uh, available inventory data. So to check in Oman if there has been any activity either from the government, but sometimes also at universities, a student have this topic uh, for a master thesis, for example. Yeah. Then uh, preliminary assessment, uh, if there is any import, preliminary assessment of the situation of the secondhand electronics, uh, assessment if any DKBDE containing uh, electronics are produced, initial assessment of the scale of um, the recycling of the plastics uh, from, from electronics and the management of these electronics. Um, and maybe you can also check if there are, like I showed before, uh, electronics, uh, freezers, coolers, uh, maybe also air conditioners, uh, which have low concentration and which maybe could be easily recycled. Um, and an initial assessment of the status of the e-waste management. So uh, in a tier two uh, inventory, you should uh, quantify the import of electronics and if they might contain DKBDE um, here to check, especially these uh, flame retardant electronics, so heaters and so on, uh, quantity of uh, imported and used stocks uh, possibly containing uh, pop PBDEs quantify the uh, generation of the e-waste for the inventory year and uh, the related uh, uh, rough uh, PBDE content, how the e-waste plastic is managed in your country. And if you have uh, import or export of such plastic, and then if there are any activities of separation of e-waste plastic yeah, for recycling, maybe. Yeah, so, and then here to check uh, low bromine and high bromine fractions uh, as it is done in Europe uh, by a range of large recyclers now. <clears throat> so while for the POPI BDEs listed in 2009, normally we recommended in the guidance only to look for the CRTs. Now with the DECA BDE, you have seen that the DECA BDE is also in other groups of electronics and these other groups also need to be included in the, in the assessment. And uh, then the guidance uh, propose you about how to calculate the concentration of PBDEs. So the data you need to get is the amount of uh, electronics and electronic waste in the different categories. Then the guidance itself provide you a factor of the polymers, so that's included uh, in the in the guidance and also what you can find in the guidance is the con the, con the average concentration content um, of uh, plastic from different uh, electronic groups yeah and uh, so therefore when you compile uh, the data from electronics you would need to look to the different electronic groups um, and you can calculate here the pop PBDEs by the amount of the specific 
electronics in tons, the total polymer fraction you get from the guidance and uh, the uh, impact factor, which is also uh, provided uh, uh, in the guidance. And what we recommend also here to look to the life cycle, this means to look to the import, to look to the current use stock, and to look to the end of life. Yeah, And for your region, maybe also to look to the, to the, to the export yeah? and to understand what is the final treatment of your electronics in the country. So here is uh, the table from the inventory guidance, which gives you an overview. So like I said, two factors uh, are needed for you. This is the amount of uh, polymers in a specific fraction. So for example, if you uh, have the data on the cathode ray tubes you still have in the country or which are going to the end of life, yeah, so this data you generate from the country, then you know 30%, so you know the weight of the CRT and you know that 30% of the CRT is plastic. And then here the guidance give you uh, the impact factor for the DECA BDE and it also gives you the impact factor for the HEXA and HEPTA BDE. Yeah, so this is separated between because for these PBDEs, the recycling would be allowed and for the DECA BDE, the recycling is not allowed. So therefore, uh, we have uh, developed and provided here uh, the different uh, impact factor in electronics uh, for the for the different for the different categories, yeah. And then uh, you would compile the data, and uh, if you have uh, something on the import, you can calculate the import. If you get the data on the stock, you would here include the stock. Uh, the same for the end of life, and our recommendation from Secretariat uh, is that in addition uh, to the POP PBDEs calculation, you also note here the quantity of e-waste plastic, because it's, this is uh, quite interesting for you when you think about management, also management in future, yeah, to understand here what is the total stock of, of e-waste plastic and uh, what need to be done for your e-waste management then um, the next years. We come to the second main sector, but for those sectors, I just uh, gave a short um, overview. The transport sector is, in my opinion, same important from the end-of-life management compared to the e-waste uh, uh, sector. I wonder a little bit why everybody uh, highlight the e-waste management in the transport sector. The volumes of plastic uh, and the volumes of valuables even are higher than in the electronics. So here we have cars, buses, trucks, trains, planes, ships, and the recovery of materials and the management of pollutants is very important. So the POP PBDE, the POPs, uh, prominated POPs in the transport sector are the following. Commercial Penta BDE, we have especially in polyurethane foam. And here, the major use has been in North America. Yeah, so from other region, the cars, we have not found really in the monitoring studies uh, a high Penta BDE. But the commercial DECA BDE, this is used uh, in, in um, different parts uh, in, in vehicles and it's, it's used in, in different regions. So here um, there is a, a good descript description uh, and especially, you know, all the exempted uses of DECA BDE in vehicles, it's a longer list in the convention, at the same time also uh, show you where it is used. And Japanese studies have shown is, it's especially the textiles in the seats, which let's say from the total volume are the highest. Also hexapromocyclododecan is used in the transport, but only minor. Also, we probably have uh, short chain chlorinated paraffins uh, in, in PVC parts like uh, cables or possibly leather. And also PFOA uh, is used uh, here uh, in, um, in, the, in, in the textiles and maybe also uh, in some of the uh, fluoropolymer, uh, fluoropolymer uh, cables. So therefore the data you need for the inventory 
uh, from the transport is first a number of registered vehicles, yeah, then a rough idea of the manufacturing of those vehicles. Because if, as you have seen, um, the Penta BDE and Octa BDE has not been used after 2004. Yeah. So therefore, it is good to get the data and a rough estimate of the operating uh, vehicles, uh, which are older than 2004, and then which are produced 2005 to 2016. And uh, vehicles produced after 2017 are considered uh, to be more or less PBDE free. Yeah. So let's say that's the a light simplification, but I think that this is uh, a, a good guidance and make the inventory halfway practical. Then uh, also you can look to the import and export of these uh, vehicles. And um, we have uh, compiled all the data uh, from PBDE studies in, in vehicles and then have compiled reasonable uh, impact factors. So the suggestion is that for the DECA BDE in cars, uh, we have 80 gram for those vehicles produced before 2005. Yeah. Only for the US cars, we are suggesting for those vehicles produced before 2005, that it is 40 gram of DECA and 40 gram of PENTA. Yeah, so that it is uh, distributed between these flame retardants because commercial DECA BDE has uh, been used until 2004 in the US and not in other regions. And then what we have seen in, in studies um, in Japan, that when you uh, analyze only vehicles produced after uh, uh, 2000, then the levels of DECA BDE is lower. And when you remember the very early slide where I have shown the use of, of the DECA BDE, yeah, and that it has been mainly in 1980s, 1990s also, so that's reasonable. So therefore, the impact factor produced from the guidance uh, for, for, for vehicles is that the levels uh, from 2005 to 2017 are only 25% uh, of, the, of the 80 gram, this means 20 gram. And then for cars produced afterwards, 2017 on, uh, we are considering they do not contain uh, the, the PBDEs, yeah? And so based on this um, uh, approach, it is possible to give a, a rough uh, estimate and to calculate uh, how much of the PBDEs you have also in your vehicles. The last sector also short is uh, building and construction sector. So for the building and construction sector, we know that uh, the PBDEs have been used uh, partly in insulation, polyurethane foam, and also the, they have been used uh, partly in some XPS foams. Then in uh, laminates and insulation panels, in piping system, uh, and in films uh, for the use under the roof to protect building areas, and also partly in cables and electronics. But like I said, unfortunately, we cannot give any impact factor because there is no reasonable uh, study uh, on this, only a few data uh, from, from, from Europe. Then what we know is more than 90% of HBCD have been used in EPS and XPS. Um, but we have also other pops in construction. Now, a uh, big part of the short chain chlorinated paraffins are probably are used in PVC and a part of PVC because 50% of the PVC use in the world go into construction. Um, also, uh, some pops have been used in sealants and paints. Today, still the short chain paraffins, but in history also PCBs and PCNs. Uh, there were some pops used in construction in the past, uh, pentachlorophenol, lindane, DDT, endosulfan. Uh, and also there is now a first report about uh, PFAS use in buildings. Um, you can Google, yeah, it's from the Green Science Policy Institute. So therefore management of plastic and polymers and other materials in construction is very interesting. And uh, in future, the construction waste has the highest waste volume overall. Yeah, so it's quite important to do this separation of, of, of waste and see what can be recycled uh, and what cannot be recycled. Uh, we have at the moment a, a project, the first project from the German government on the recycling of plastic from buildings. Yeah, so you see, it's really a contemporary. It's it's really a contemporary topic. 
Uh, and actually, on 15th October, we will have a we will have a um, a workshop from UNIDO uh, on 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 this topic uh, with specific HPCD in construction, but then also includes one presentation about recycling of plastic. So for the HPCD, there is a also a guidance yeah so here you can look uh, to eps and xps so we know the concentration the average concentration of uh, hbcd and eps and uh, also the concentration in xps which is higher so what your task is that you really discuss with the construction sector about the use of eps and xps that you are looking in your country if there is a company which are producing EPS and XPS because often the production is in the country because you know the EPS XPS is so voluminous and so light that normally the export and there is normally not export import of these materials so normally only the pellets uh, including the flame retardants uh, are uh, uh, imported and then um, the the production is in the country yeah, and so it's very important to go to these co uh, companies and to understand what is the amount they have produced in the past and for which years they have used HPCD. Yeah, then finally, putting all the data together, management and evaluation of the data uh, involving maybe uh, some people to do proofreading. Um, and then finally, prepare the inventory report with the data. Uh, this means compile the data of uh, electronic waste, of the transport sector, of the construction sector, including also the methodology uh, you have used. Also, please tell all the assumptions you have done. Um, so this is the base for uh, to compile the inventory information in the updated NIP then. Yeah, this means first you put the larger information in an inventory report, and then you compile these and include it in your national implementation plan. And if you do country specific adjustment, so if you said, ah, no, we have own measurements of e-waste plastic and our concentration in the e-waste plastic was different uh, from the, the one uh, uh, impact factors giving in the, in the uh, guidance, then of course you can use your uh, monitor data. You do not need to use uh, the uh, impact factor from the guidance, yeah, so this is, uh, can be country specific and uh, you are the boss for your inventory. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Roland. Uh, it was a perfect timing and it was excellent. And I think uh, the floor is open for the discussion. Yeah, Hassan, I, I know you have started in Kiesel to do some plastic uh, pyrolysis, plastic recycling. So have you, have, yeah, you have you started also with e-waste, uh, thinking on e-waste recycling or e-waste plastic monitoring? Yeah, actually we have one of our colleagues, he is working with this uh, pyrolysis with mm. plastic and he have lab for that. And probably it would be a program in, in Kiesel for the waste. And right now we have a proposal uh, under a process uh, to be funded about electronic waste. Um, I think, is, uh, I agree with you, electronic waste is really important. And by the way, uh, I invited one of the students, she's doing master degree in electronic waste. She's with us, she, uh, I asked her to attend because this is, uh, I'm expecting to be valuable information. And thanks for the uh, information, actually. It's really brilliant. Okay, welcome. How is the e-waste situation in Oman? Um, do you um, know? Yes, uh, Roland, uh, thank you very much for your uh, this benefit uh, information uh, in your uh, talk. Uh, in Oman, actually, we are uh, starting first with the microplastic. I know it's uh, becoming a uh, discussion, but becoming talk. Uh, joined with pops in the seawater and uh, in sediments uh, in uh, around activities area and uh, we got uh, results 
uh, but still we are uh, in writing uh, and uh, analyzing the results. We just finished uh, three weeks ago from our uh, project. Azhar, she is uh, uh, project manager uh, for this project. And uh, also I have another uh, have a question uh, regarding the products like uh, the constructions, the products uh, for the pipes or other products, how we can uh, know uh, if they have uh, has the, like these products uh, pops or not from the manufacturer or from uh, the their MSDS or uh, uh, normal, normally you will not find it in the, in the MSDS. I mean, uh, one thing is yet yes. I mean, you should request more information from from uh, from the producer. You know, it's a big discussion uh, also for global electronics, uh, for global other products to really do uh, detailed information uh, on uh, the chemicals used in those products. At the moment, um, Europe has a, has a big activity uh, to develop a database uh, on chemicals in the products and the industry is not very happy about it. But I mean, when the policymakers decide something, then the producers have to follow. Yeah, so uh, maybe it's interesting, I mean, to look to, I think it's the, the name is Skip Database in the European Union, uh, where they are requiring uh, this kind of information uh, of, of, of chemicals uh, in, 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 in these products. Um, one possibility for monitoring, uh, which I would really find interesting, uh, also for Hassan, uh, is uh, when you have an XRF. Uh, you can easily screen bromine. And uh, so for the products in, in construction, yeah, so this could be a nice pre-screening. So mm -hmm. you would re easily see what products contain a uh, brominated flame retardant and what product does not contain a brominated flame retardant. So by this, uh, you could uh, reduce and, and minimize uh, uh, an, an analytical efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Yeah. Roland, we have actually, we have, um, other than the XRF, the big machine, we have it with a small, uh, in, a, in a bag, you use it by hand. So mm. it is hand. Yeah, a small uh, handheld, a handheld XRF. Yeah, so it, you yeah. can go to, to construction sites and then uh, you can screen easily the, the different polymers and, and, and plastic yeah. parts. Yeah, if so it was it's fine. Kind of uh, Hassan, is it a kind of the portable detector or what? Is yeah, it? portable. Yeah, portable. It's very small. It's small and small. Not that big. You can take it by your hand. Ah, oh, that's and, excellent. And you can put uh, whatever the sample. You can put it uh, uh, through it uh, through your machine, and it will be giving you reading if there is a bromine or not. Brilliant! It will be help us to gain time. Yeah, that's give you indicator. That's you give you indicator. When we have soil, we we use uh, soil. We sure about it. There is a bromine. And we have soil which is we analyze there is no bromine, and we test that machine it was working fine, showing yeah. when there is a bromine showing yes there is a bromine, with the soil without bromine showing without bromine. Brilliant. So, I'll contact uh, you regarding this later. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course, no problem. Yes. Yeah, and you can you know uh, the very strong thing of this equipment is that you can also analyze uh, the, uh, all the heavy metals. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Heavy metals. Uh, also, uh, for chlorine, you can detect chlorine, but uh, at higher uh, detection limit uh, compared to bromine. Uh, mm. Also, you can detect uh, phosphorus uh, for phosphorus mm. uh, flame retardant, but also mm. at, at higher detection limits. Yeah. So it's quite useful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Regarding the detection limit, it's, it's not. It's, it's not really very low. It is acceptable to showing mm. you, but it does not be as analytical. You cannot yes, go with the, with the deep uh, limit. Yeah, but for bromine, you know, it goes down to 10 ppm. Yeah, so uh, it's, I think it is. Yeah, so it so that's uh, that's uh, sufficiently low for 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 bromine. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So this means um, that that you have uh, developed analysis of PBDEs in Oman already for your microplastic project. Yes, we uh, designed a project uh, for microplastic in, uh, uh, th we uh, di uh, divide it in three stages. First stage, quantification of microplastic in seawater and sediments uh, in Oman. 
and uh, the next uh, stage we're going to start inshallah by in in, in uh, two months three months uh, for biota the toxicology toxicity for the microplastic analyzing biota fish and uh, uh, any uh, uh, samples related to the uh, toxicity and uh, the first third, third stage we're going to concentrate on the uh, treatment using a kind of uh, nanoparticles, uh, ZNO, for treating the microplastic and, uh, or, or a kind of enzymes by my, microbiology for uh, treating this microplastic. Okay, good. Mm. Yeah, then maybe Shireen would be next door. Yasa? Yeah. yeah, okay, now thank you so much, uh, Roland, and it was an excellent discussion. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammed Al-Kasbi and Dr. Hassan. Now, 